We're using Premier One's electric fencing for our goats and sheep, and I'm gonna show you how I set it up and how effective it is for helping our animals clear our property. Hi, my name's Nick and welcome to the Rig and Farm YouTube channel. We got our goats this past February and we kept them in the same fencing as our chickens until we got an area specifically for them. We've been using Premier One fencing for our pigs and chickens for the last couple years, and we're really pleased with the product so far. This video is not sponsored in any way, nor are we making money from Premier One because of it. If someone from Premier One is watching this video and wants to sponsor us, just let us know. For the goats and the sheep we knew we were going to be getting soon, we went with this 48 inch permanent fencing. Their permanent fencing is meant to be semi-permanent, meaning that it can withstand harsh weather conditions for up to a couple years at a time. It's especially good on uneven terrain like we have here on our property. It comes in 100 or 150 foot rolls. We went with 450 foot rolls so that we would have 600 feet of fencing plus a seven and a half foot gate also made by Premier One. The reason we went with this type of fencing for our sheep and goats is because we rotationally graze them and allow them to clear up all of the brush and other undesirable things growing on our property. Moving them to different areas also helps with their parasite loads because they're not eating in the same place where they defecate. I started setting up the fence near the raised bed garden and went down towards the creek that runs through the middle of our property. Installing the fence is pretty simple. Start by finding one end of a roll and pushing the spikes at the bottom of the pole into the ground. Pull the next pole as tight as possible and push the spikes into the ground. Just keep going until you run out of fencing. Grab your next roll, start the first pole next to the last one, wrap the electric jumpers around the two poles and clip them together. Repeat the process until you've circled around to the start of your first roll of fencing. When dealing with a wooded area like we have, I found it's best to stretch out the entire length of the roll as much as possible rather than going one pole at a time. Picking up and setting down the roll repeatedly usually causes tangles in the netting, which is very annoying to deal with. We try to find the path of least resistance with a fencing, but inevitably we have to deal with a tree, logs, bushes, or other debris that causes an obstacle. That is why we bring our reciprocating saw with us. Once the path is clear, it's easy to install each of the poles. The most difficult part is creating a perimeter that uses up the entire length of fencing. When getting to the end of the last roll, you definitely are going to have to make some adjustments to either get it further or closer to the starting point. The only exception would be if you're setting up on unobstructed level land. We definitely don't have that. The fencing would be pretty much impossible to get in and out of if you don't install one of these gates. It's even easier to set up than the rest of the fencing and you don't even have to deal with tangles because it's only 7.5 feet long and not 150 feet. This fencing is meant to be electrified so that it keeps your animals in and predators out. Premier One even says that it's good to protect against coyotes and wild boars. The Energizer that we bought is the Prima Shock 4. It's capable of being run on a battery or plugged into an outlet. They sell kits that are specific to either option you plan on using. We run it off a deep cycle marine battery. Normally you'd have to disconnect the battery and charge it periodically, but we connected it to a 60 watt solar panel to charge it every day. There are several solar powered energizers on the market and they work really great until you have a couple days without good sunlight. The batteries they come with are relatively small and they only run about two to three days on a full charge. The battery we're using will keep it running for several weeks without a charge. If we have multiple days of rain and overcast, we're not gonna get a whole lot of charge out of that panel, but the battery will still keep running. One or two days of full sun will fully charge the battery back to 100%. So with this setup, the battery will never go dead. We've been running this system for two and a half months and the battery still has a full charge. Now I'm gonna use some drone footage so you can see what it looked like from the sky when we first put our goats in it. A circle will give you the most area possible, but we had lots of giant tree stumps and other logging debris that made that impossible for us. You can see that we had to cut through where the pile stops. Notice that shelter towards the bottom of the screen? 
We'll be posting a video on how we built that pretty soon. Our little curry loved having all the space to explore and eat. About a month later, as the weather got warmer, we had lots of growth outside of the fencing, but not much inside. We had just gotten our sheep a few days before this video was taken, and there is very little green to see here. The sheep are still getting used to us, so they're extremely difficult to catch. I had to bring in one section of the fence really close to the shelter and then kind of corner them over here and then trap them by moving the fence over and completing the fourth side. I actually let the goats explore the rest of our property because they never really got too far away from me, because they like me. Once the sheep were contained, I took down, moved, and set up the other three sections of fencing. Now, this next configuration is not utilizing the length of the fencing efficiently at all but it does give the animals a condensed area where they can focus on clearing out the growth. As you might be able to see, I kept one roll of the fence in almost the exact same spot and wrapped the other two rolls the opposite direction to give them all new greenery. Let me show you again what it looked like before I moved the fencing and what it looks like now. You can see that these three goats and two sheep have been very busy. In just a few days, we're gonna be moving this fencing to a completely new area of our property. The shelter we built has wheels, so we can use our tractor to move it pretty much anywhere we want. Make sure you look out for our shelter build video so you can see how exactly we moved it and where the goats and sheep are going to go next. We hope you found this video useful. Go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you don't already. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.